Happy Quinceanera, age cuties, and happy Friday. Glad you can join me for our end of the week party on National Pizza Day. How do you like your pie? You keep it simple? A little maz, a little basil? You like veggies? Mmm. Or are you a meat lover? Oh, you love meat, don't you? If you love meat so much, why don't you marry it? No, no judgments here. Eat your za how you want, as long as we can all agree that calzones are an abomination. I hope you're hungry for trivia, because that's what I'm serving up here on HQ, the live mobile game show where you answer cues to win cash. I'm your host with the whole milk mozzarella, Scott Rogowski, AKA the Bad and Bougie Barker, AKA the Trap Trebek, AKA Quiz Khalifa, kneading dough from the greatest city on earth, the city that never sleeps, Utica, New York. With all 860,000 plus of you who might be in need of dough, including Skyler, Courtney Sakura, Karen number 12, and happy birthdays to Haley Siegel, Maggie Main, Alex Kaysendorf, Bob Shea, Callie, Sam Hudson, Melissa C., and a special message for Joe. Joe, will you go to prom with Valeska? It's our first HQ promposal. Making history, making quistry here today. Joe, don't let us down. You guys know how this goes by now, right? I ask 12 questions, you have 10 seconds to answer for when I start talking. If you get it right, you move on, make it to the end, you, you win our prize. Yeah, you win our cash prize, which today is 2,500 Denmarks, 2,500 Djiboutis, $2,500, shake, shake, Djibouti. That's good enough for 2,499 slices of dollar pizza and a bottle of water to wash it all down if you live in New York, home of the dollar slice. Hey, save some pizza for the Winter Olympics tonight. The opening ceremony is tonight. I'll be watching NBC, taking a break for HQ, of course. In the meantime, we have our own international competition of the finest mental athletes on the planet. I'm talking about you. Yeah, you, you get to participate. You ready to quiz with me and get some money? Then let's get down to the nitty gritty, baby. Let's get this show on the road. Cumero numero uno. Which term is shorthand for a useful item when changing a flat tire? Surplus, spare, or supplement? Over 900,000 of you got in under the gate. You're in the game right now. If you bust flat in Baton Rouge, you better hope you got a spare tire in the trunk before you Thumb down a diesel. Yeah, spare is the word. At least a donut. Have a donut in the trunk. That's the junk you want in your trunk. 874,574 are rolling on. Hey, I, I call AAA, by the way. I, I can't change my own tire. I'm not a man. Spare me your gutter mouth. 874,000 feeling like spare Jordan at Q1. You are sparing yourselves the agony of an early exit. Q2. Tonga's 2016 Olympic flag bearer became a global viral sensation for dressing how? Oiled up and shirtless, completely naked, or like D Barney the Dinosaur. Do you remember this from a couple years ago? The Summer Olympics Tonga? His name is Pita Nicholas Taufatofua. And I hear, I hear he might be doing the same thing at the Winter Olympics opening ceremony tonight. Who cares if it's 22 degrees when you look that good, oiled up and shirtless? Oh, Tonga. Yeah, the kingdom of Tonga being repped by one of the handsomest, hairless, oiled up, shirtless men I've ever seen. 554,023 of you could be crowned king or queen of HQ today. We lost over 200,000. Barney the dinosaur. I mean, that would have been something too, but uh, now Barney's a little irrelevant these days and completely naked. That might have violated the uh, IOC and the FCC. Q3, what Olympic legend was the subject of a song in an Oscar-nominated 1999 film? Brian Boitano, Christy Yamaguchi, or Michelle Kwan? Stop looking at me, Kwan. Do you remember this movie? 1999, the South Park movie, yeah! Featured many great songs, Blame Canada. I'm super, thanks for asking. Kyle's mom is a, but one of the biggest, longest, uncuttest was what would Brian Boitano do? No, not Brian Denny, he, Brian Boitano. He built the pyramids, he beat up Kublai Khan, and you could be saving Terrence and Philip if you got this one right. Oh boy, Oberto, savagery here at Q3. You don't remember the South Park song? The South Park movie? What would Brian Boitano do? I thought you'd be humming it all day. I mean, this is the time of year to be humming this song. 149,838 of you got it right. Let's see 
This in action. Play it again, Stan. What would Brian Boitano do if he was here right now? He'd make a plan and he'd follow through. That's what Brian Boitano do. <laughs> What would Brian Boitano, Brian Boitano would play HQ. He might even win it. And guess what? Tonight, if you come back with us tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, we're going to have a special, genuine, bona fide Olympian. Yes, a medalist, a gold medalist here on the show. So come back. Q4, which of these items would be measured on the Scoville scale? Habanero, Typhoon, or Emerald? Oh my gosh, we had Bert from Sesame Street a couple weeks ago. And now we have a real life human being co-hosting tonight. But right now at Q4, the Scoville scale was created by Wilbur Scoville. It measures the pungency of spicy foods, especially chili peppers like your habaneros. Hey oh, habanero, a bell pepper on the low side of the scale, while your ghost peppers, your scotch bonnet peppers, those are on the ouchy wowie side of the scale, 110,227. You're not getting burned here. That's a spicy question. We did lose over 40K, but we're, we have 110,227 left. Maybe some of you use your extra lives there. Q5, which of these iconic African-American leaders was not born into slavery? W.E.B. Du Bois, Frederick Douglass, or Booker T. Washington? Not born into slavery. Two of them were, one was not. In the Berkshires of Eastern Massachusetts, you'll find Great Barrington. It's an okay place, I've been there. I wouldn't call it great. It's okay, it's okay. It's the birthplace, however, of W.E.B. Du Bois, who unlike Washington and Douglas, was born a free man. Yes, he went on to found, co-found the NAACP in 1909, of course. Booker T. Washington went on to found Booker T. and the MGs. 43,506 of you got your green onions. Frederick Douglass, still alive, right? According to our president, he's getting recognized more and more as the time goes on. He's doing great things, Frederick Douglass. Q6, a cat with what fur pattern is almost always female? Calico, tuxedo, or tabby? Oh, mama. And Frederick Douglass spelled with two S's, Mr. President. Okay, we're talking about cats now. Calico, tuxedo, or tabby, the multicolored fur pattern of a calico is tied to the female X chromosome. X marks the spot for a male cat to be a calico. He has to have an extra X along with the Y and the X. 30,995. You keep it tracks of the X's and Y's there? Yeah, the odds of a male calico are itty kitty small, and those males are sterile. Wow, wow. 30,995. Hurrying on to Q7, which nation does not have a two-word capital city? Brunei, Ethiopia, or Malaysia? Two-word capital. Some of those capitals out there, they're word hogs. Malaysia makes their laws in Kuala Lumpur. That's two words. Ethiopia's president crashes in Addis Ababa. That's two words. But two words aren't enough for those Bruneians. They have to have a rare three-worder. Bandar Seri Begawan is the capital of Brunei on the island of Borneo. The Sultan can afford it, believe me. And 10,109 of you could be affording a vacation to Brunei. If you get all these questions right, we got a few more. Q8, in 2014, an excavation at a New Mexican landfill uncovered what? Flying car prototype, lost Picasso sculpture, or over 1,000 Atari games. New Mexico, long rumored to be the burial site of Atari's disastrous 1983 E.T. the Extraterrestrial Game. This dig in Alamogordo, shout out White Sands National Monument, uncovered over 1,300 cartridges and hardware from this Atari game. Yes, 6,203 of you got it right. You can watch a documentary about this. A couple of hundred of those games are now in the Smithsonian. It's game over for the 4,000 plus. Who picked Picasso? Flying car, I wish. But E.T. is phoning Q9 for the rest of you. The athlete who has competed in the most Olympic games hails from which country? Canada, Finland, or Japan? Down to 6,203. We had nearly a million start the game on this Friday afternoon, starting the weekend. Americans might have Captain America, but EMLR is known as Captain Canada. Now you can blame Canada. He's competed in 10 different Olympics as an equestrian 
2012 in London was his last Olympic at the age of 65. And 1866 got it right on another savage question here at Q9. Heyo! Divided sky, the wind blows high, 1866. Meanwhile, Steve Rogers has yet to compete in a single Olympic event. What's up with that? He'd probably be decent at discus. What with the shield throw? Q10, which of these fonts was not created by Microsoft? Comic Sans, Verdana, Papyrus. Mm. Not created by Microsoft. Microsoft has been making resumes more fun for over 20 years, having launched Comic Sans in 94 and Verdana in 96, but it was 23-year-old graphic designer Chris Costello who gave us Papyrus in 1982, sold the rights for $750, $1,179 of you knew James Cameron's favorite futuristic font. The rest of you stranded for a moment on the ocean of Osiris but we have 1179 expanding exponentially like some recursive virus, Q11, and the first known use of mammoth as an adjective. What item was it describing? A hunk of cheese, the Empire State Building, or a dinosaur? Mammoth. This is a mammoth penultimate question here. You gotta answer this one and one more to win that cash. Gifted to President Thomas Jefferson by the town of Cheshire, Massachusetts. The 1,234 pound mammoth Wheel of Cheese took three weeks to get to DC. It sat in the White House for two years. 347, you got it right. On another savage question, surviving the savagery. Oh, macho man savage, dropping that flying elbow. 347, still in the ring. Oh boy, Alberto, the cheese stands alone and so do 347 of you HQDs here as you enter the octagon for the final round. Q12, this is it, folks. It all boils down to this. 347 players, $2,500. You could buy back the rights to Papyrus. You could buy a giant wheel of cheese with that money. Whatever you want, you gotta get this one right. Q12, which of these countries has a lower gross domestic product than any US state? Ecuador, Uzbekistan, or Iceland? Gross domestic product, GDP. You down with GDP? Yeah, you know me. The total US GDP is around $18 trillion, to give you some perspective. Yeah, we've been trill. This country comes in around 20 billion. There's a big difference between the T and the B there. That's lower than the lowest state GDP, which is Vermont, the Green Mountain State. Who to thunk a nation that considers putrid shark meat a delicacy could be less profitable than Ben and Jerry's? It's Iceland. Iceland's your answer, and we got 78 winners, baby! What up, geysers? What up, volcanoes? What up, fjords? What up, Iceland? It's Iceland! And we have 78 winners. We have 50 winners. Well, I'm seeing 50 winners now? 50? A 5 0? How about that? Splitting 25 hundo? So that, 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 that's a lot of money for all you guys. E, 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 the comic, Cosmic Jester, $32.05. Is that, is that how the math breaks down? I'm not great at math. T Floyd 15, Arctech, Sam Schulte, Sanders. Eggy Man, Aesop, and your fables, you're getting 32 bucks. And Unfasten, you better open up your piggy bank there, put the money in, you want it, it's yours, you did it, yay! Come back tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern time, like I said, special guest, Olympic guest joining me tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern, you're not gonna wanna miss that one. The kickoff to the Winter Olympics, opening ceremonies happening, we're celebrating, we're in the mood. I'm in the mood, I can't wait. I'm Scott Rogowski, thanks for playing today. I'm signing off for now saying, people, people, you're forgetting what the Olympics are all about. Giving out medals of beautiful gold, so, so silver, and shameful bronze. Ah!